Apostle Clint Potters out of Gainesville, Georgia. Thank God for those of you that are watching us live by broadcast, those of you that are watching us live by webinar. We're just so happy, amen, to be in your local area. Some of you are watching uh, in the state. Some of you are watching out of the country. We call this healing for today because I believe with all of my heart, God wants you well today. It's healing for today uh, in your particular area. Uh, it is the will of God for you to be healed. Uh, we've been talking about a great things as it relates to the healing power of God. And one of the things that I really want people to understand that we're in the last of the last days. Because of that, God is going to do some powerful things. Many of you who are watching this broadcast are already in 2016. Uh, many of you tonight are watching this broadcast about to go in 2016. But one of the things I want you to realize is this. I believe there's a shifting going on in the body of Christ like never before. There is a greater awareness of God's power in these last days. The Bible talks about that there's going to be wars and rumors of wars uh, based upon the Word of God. I call it self-fulfillment prophecies, meaning that uh, these are prophecies that are going to come to pass no matter what happened. I believe there is a revelation of divine healing. There's too many people sick in our society. Physically, they're emotionally sick. Uh, there's so many disturbances that's going on. And how many people know we need to minister the healing power of God to people's lives? And so if we need to minister to people's lives, it is very important to us to realize God wants you well. And so with this program that we're doing here now, it is the will of God for you and I to walk in divine healing. It is the will of God that every organ, every tissue, every blood cell will function according to the Word of God. I also want you to realize, too, that if those of you that are watching us by TV, those of you that are watching on the Internet, you actually can go on to www.clintonpotters.org. That's www.clintonpotters.org. Potters.org, where you're viewing this broadcast live as well. Many of you can go back. Amen. We have what we call a pre-recorded broadcast of Healing for Today. I believe that's my assignment in these last days. I believe that it is a assignment that God himself has given me in these last days to minister the healing power of God. So think about it right now. What's hurting on the inside of you? What part of your body is hurting right now? Do you realize that God doesn't want you to stay the same? Do you realize that God doesn't want you to struggle for the rest of your life with that physical sickness, emotional sickness, even spiritual sickness in your life? Do you realize that God does have an answer? These are some answers, questions that people have asked me, and I want to get into those answers today because I know it all in my heart. It is not by, uh, uh, by chance to not today or even tonight, wherever you are, uh, that you're watching because God wants you well. There's too many people preaching sickness and disease and saying God is doing a lot of things when God is not even in the midst of all of that. The Bible says in John 10, verse 10, that the thief comes not but to steal, kill, and destroy. But the Bible said Jesus has come to provide life and to provide it more abundantly. So if Jesus has come to give us life, it is what I call the Zoe, the God kind of life. It is the life of of eternal. It is the life of God that is able to go in your physical body to cause that that will not function to start functioning properly. It is called the Zoe, the God kind of life. So at this particular time, let's get out your word of God. We're going to go what I call foundational scriptures. Foundational scriptures is scriptures that we're talking about uh, as it relates to the healing power of God. The first scripture we go into, of course, is Isaiah 53, 4, 5. Isaiah 53, 4, 5. That talks about surely uh, he bore our griefs and he carried our sorrows. So if you look at Isaiah 53, verse 4, it talks about he bore our griefs. And in, in, in the actual uh, Hebrew translation, the word griefs means sicknesses, disease, and weaknesses. Sicknesses, disease, and weaknesses. And so the Bible says he bore our sicknesses, he bore our weaknesses, he bore our disease. And then he said, and he carried our sorrows. The word sorrows is pain. So notice Jesus bore the sickness, he bore disease, he bore your weaknesses, 
guess what? He carried your pain. So it is not the will of God for you and I to be in pain. Where there's physical pain, where there's emotional pain, where that is a, a, a spiritual pain, no pain at all. Why? Jesus bore it over 2,000 years ago. So my thing is this. If Jesus already bore our sickness, he we already carried my pain, well, why you and I should be carrying our pain today? Why should you and I have to put up with the sickness, the disease, and weaknesses that are in our lives? Matthew 8, 17 is our foundation of Scripture said it like this, so that the Scripture may be fulfilled. He himself took my sickness, and he bore my infirmities. That's over in Matthew 8, verse 16 and 17. The Bible said, and Jesus healed all of them so that the Scripture may be fulfilled. He himself took my sickness, my disease. He carried my infirmities. So Matthew is now quoting what Isaiah said. So I want to give you those two foundations as we start our lesson today uh, because I want to talk about today the power of your words as it relates to divine healing today. You'll be amazed at how many people go around speaking totally against what God's Word said about they, their bodies. Uh, what they would do is they'll believe God for healing, uh, but out of their mouth comes words that are totally in contradiction of what the Word of God said. And so we're going to see here that it's very important that you line your words up with the Word of God pertaining healing today. And so we're going to go to Luke 7. I want to bring some things out that I think would really bless you today. Uh, Luke 7, and I'm going to read here just for a moment. Uh, the Bible talks about uh, here in verse 6. He said, then Jesus went from with them, and when he was now not far from the house, the centurion sent myself, uh, sent friends to him, saying unto him, Lord, trouble us now thyself, for I am not worthy that thou shalt enter, uh, enter under my roof. Verse 7 says, Wherefore, neither thou I myself worthy to come unto thee, but say in a word, and my servant shall be healed. Uh, the centurion said, Lord, I am not even worthy to even have you to come underneath my roof because I have a revelation of who you are. You are Jesus Christ, the Son of the living God. But if you speak your word, I know my servant will be healed. See, there's something about when you speak the Word of God over your life. Many people don't speak the Word of God over their life. They speak in other things over their life and not realizing that the Bible talks about that your words have created power to even license, to allow, to permit God to do something in your life. And so you must understand this. If you want God to do something in your life, you're going to have to speak in line with God's Word. Now, I want to digress just for a moment because the Bible talks about uh, that all of us in here are what I call spiritual beings. What do I mean by spiritual being? All of you were born in the image of God. The Bible says in John 4 verse 24 that God is a spirit and they that worship him must worship him in what? In spirit and in truth. So if God is a spirit, guess what? And then Genesis 1 says, let us make man in our own what? Image, our own likeness, and our own similitude. Then the Bible says, because he made us in the image of God, then guess what? We are spiritual beings. God then gave us a house or a physical body so that we may be able to move around in this earth. So the Bible talks about you are a spirit being. Because you are a spirit being and you were born of God, what you mean by born of God? The Bible says in St. John 3 and 3, you remember when Nicodemus came over to Jesus and he said, Nicodemus, uh, 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 Jesus said, you must be born again. And Nicodemus probably said, he said in the scripture, he said, how can I, who are old, uh, 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 go, uh, be born again? And he said, just like what is born of the flesh is flesh, and what is born of the spirit is spirit. So just like a baby is born in the natural, so shall you be born in the spirit. So whatever is flesh is flesh. 
and whatever his spirit is what? Spirit. So in other words, because Nicodemus had to be born again, he had to be born now of the Spirit of God now. Why isn't it important? Because whoever you are born from, you will always have the traits of that person. Let me say that again. Whoever you are born from. Uh, uh, so think about your kids. I guarantee you there are some traits, there are some similarities that, that's in your child because of you. Why? You were born from them. And we talked about the medical part, the chromosomes, so forth and so on. Know that because you were born from them. And because you were birthed from them, then there are some traits. Are you listening to me? In other words, they may have the same nose you have, same color eye. There are some traits between the mom and daddy that's in that child. Why? Because they came from you. Now, why are you talking about that? Because the Bible talks about that Nicodemus said to, Jesus said to Nicodemus, you must be what? Born again. Nicodemus said, how can I be old? Go back into my mother's womb. Well, the natural mind can't understand it. So Jesus looked at him and said, Nicodemus, what I'm talking about is being born of the spirit. So what is born of the flesh is flesh, but what is born of the spirit is spirit. So when you and I got born again, what do I mean by born again? When you gave your life over to Jesus, according to Romans 10, verse 9, the Bible said, When thou confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus, believe in thine heart that God is raised from the dead, thou shalt be saved. So instantly something happened on the inside. Guess what? Your spirit, which was spiritually dead, which is separated from God, from the life of God, alienated from the life of God, now became now born again. The nature of God was now deposited on the inside of you. That's why the Bible says in 2 Corinthians 5, 17, that if, if, if any man be in Christ, guess what? He's a what? New creature. Old things have what? Passed away. Behold, all things have what? Become new. So now you are a new creature on the inside. Why? Because you did Romans 10 and 9. You confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus. You believed in your heart that God is raising from the dead, so now you became saved. You became a new creature in Christ. Now, because you are now born again and you're born from the Spirit, then guess what? The traits of God, the nature of God has been deposited on the inside of you. You now have God's spiritual DNA on the inside of you. You have the nature of God on the inside of you. So now you are expected to act like your daddy now. Why? You were born of the Spirit now. Why is that important? Because God is what I call a speaking spirit. He speaks, it happened. You remember in Genesis? The Bible said it like this. He said, let there be what? Light. And there was what? Light. The Bible said, and God said, and God said, Genesis 1, and God said, and God said. Then he goes down to verse 15, and God said. Then he goes down to verse 22, and God said. And then in the end of it, and the Bible said, and God saw. Guess what? God saw what he had been saying. So many of you are saying, well, if God said it, he saw it, then guess what? That's God. But notice, you're born of God. Because I'm born of God, I have traits of God in me. I have the nature of God in me. I have God's spirit in me. Why is that important concerning healing? Because because you have the nature of God in you, because you have God's spiritual DNA in you, then you can speak just like God speaks. You have the created power of God residing on the inside of you. And whatever you declare, whatever you decree to come out of your mouth, it has to come to pass. And so the Bible talks about here, he said in the book of Proverbs, he says, death and life are in the power of your tongue. Your tongue is used to articulate words that come out of your mouth. Uh, your tongue is used to enunciate and pronunciate words. And, and so we can read it like this, death and life are in the power of your words. So your words has the ability now to create death, or your words have the ability to create life. And so notice the Bible said it's in you. 
Why? Because you're born of God and you have God's nature on the inside of you. That is a nature that is able to declare those things according to the word of God. Why is that important? Because when we walk in divine healing, we believe in God for healing, you got to be careful what you're saying. See, the enemy knows the word just like you know the word. He can't get you until you violate the word. Glory to God. He got to get you to say something you shouldn't be saying. Are you listening to me out there? So notice here, even though physical sickness, physical disease is attacking your body, Satan knows that he cannot destroy you until you open up your mouth and begin to agree with what he's attacking you with. You hear people come around, oh, God, I'm just catching the flu. I'm catching the cold. If it ain't one thing, it's another. I'm always getting sick around this time. Every time during the holiday season, it looks like I can never have something great because my body is always aching in pain. Notice that you're lining your mouth up with the devil. Why? Because the Bible says in John 10 and 10, 10, that the thief coming not but to steal, kill, and destroy. Satan comes to steal. He comes to kill. He comes to destroy but if you line your words up with Satan, he'll take you up out of here. But if you line your words up with the word of Almighty God, you're walking what I call supernatural life of God, that every organ, every tissue, every blood cell, my God, will be functioning according to the word of God. Why? Because you're lining yourself up with the word. Your words are powerful. And see, dear heart, you have to understand that you have power in your words. Sometimes people don't receive their healing. It's because they're speaking against it. You can't believe God for healing and speak against healing. You got to believe God for healing and line everything up on the inside that said, God, I am healed. Now, I know many of you are saying, well, man of God, hold up now. If my body is aching with pain, you're trying to tell me I shouldn't say I don't have any pain? That would be a lie. Are you telling me to lie, man of God? Oh, no, 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 no. Dare not tell you to lie. But the Bible does say this. Let every man be a liar and let God's word be the truth. So in other words, what did the word say about it? Did the word say you were sick or did the word say you was healed? Come on, come on. What, what did the word say? I'm talking to you today. So, so what did the word say? Well, my body says I'm sick. Okay, but what did the word say? Well, the word says I'm healed. So, so which, who's lying then? Is God lying? Did you, do, would you dare say God's lying? Well, look like the symptom is lying to you. Because the Bible said, let every man be a liar and let God's word be the what? Truth. I said it before in past uh, uh, sessions there with you there. There is a, different, a difference between a fact, F-A-C-T, versus the truth, T-R-U-T-H. There is a difference. The fact is always proven by natural substance or natural situation. It may be a fact that your body is aching with pain, but according to God's word, it is not the truth. It may be a fact that the doctor diagnosed you with that type of sickness, but that's not the truth according to the word of God. See, we, start, we need to start speaking truth and not fact. What we're doing is we keep speaking what the facts are. Oh, you know, my, my head is keep hurting. I got a migraine. Things are not getting better. Now, let me ask you this. If you keep speaking the problem, guess what? You're going to have the problem. You can't keep speaking the problem wanting a solution. How many people know that insanity is doing the same thing over and over, uh, uh, expecting different results. If I'm going to get some different results in my life, I'm going to have to do something I've never done before. I'm going to have to say some things I've never said before if I'm going to get different results in my life. Well, what happened is we go ahead, glory to God, and we start speaking death on our lives. And you say, what, what do you mean death? You speak sickness. Oh, I'm taking the flu. I'm taking the cold. It's not going to get better. My head never getting better. What, what, what did the word say? What did Isaiah 53, 4 and 5 say? 
Did Isaiah say, by the stripes, we are healed? We are present tense. If we are healed, that means I'm healed right now. Matthew 8, 17, talking about you are healed. 1 Peter 2, 24 says you were healed, past him. So if I am healed, I are healed, I were healed, <laughs> glory to God, then I am healed. So guess what I have to do? I have to start saying what the Word said. See, let every man be a liar. Let God's Word be the truth. So yes, it's a fact the sickness is tacking to your body, but it's not the truth. that uh, It's the truth that God says you're healed. So guess what you do? You start saying, I'm healed. I'm healed. Your body says, you're lying. No, you're lying, body. The Word says I'm healed. I'm speaking life over my body. I'm commanding every organ, every tissue, every blood cell to function properly according to the Word of God. You begin to speak life over your body. What do you mean life? The Bible said God's Word is life. So every time you speak the Word over your body, over your life, you're creating what? Life. Stop speaking death. Well, what is death? Anything that goes against the word. Anything goes against the word is death. So notice here, we speak in life. Why is that important that we speak life? Because guess what? We got to line ourselves up with the word of Almighty God. As I line myself up with the word of God, then guess what? Things going to happen in my life, but I got to line myself up. I got to speak what's right. I can't keep going around right here, a poor mouth in and saying, I'm not getting any better. No, God wants you well. Glory to God. I know what the doctors say, but I said, God wants you well. You got to start declining. God wants me well. It is not the will of God for you to die premature. It is not the will of God for you to sit there and suffer uh, and, and for the rest of your life. I don't care what preacher told you that. The Word says you're supposed to be healed. When we going to start believing this Bible? When we going to start saying, by the stripes of Jesus, I am healed? See, you gotta, you're going to have to get bold with it. Now let's go to Luke 7. Glory to God. I've been trying to get Luke 7 for the last 15, 20 minutes. But I, I just need to motivate you today and let you know if your life is right there in your tongue. I mean, let me give you this. You remember in the Bible when the Bible talks about when Moses came to the Red Sea. You remember the story the Bible talks about, or some scholars say there was over 3.2 million people that came out of Egypt. My goodness, Moses had a, definitely a mega, mega church. And notice the Bible talks about when Moses was live, delivering the people out of Israel, the Bible said they came up before the Red Sea. And therefore, then we know that the Red Sea was in front of them. Also, you heard uh, 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 the sound uh, of the chariots and the horses uh, that were coming behind them. And all of a sudden, Moses began to look around, and people began to be afraid because of things that are happening. And all of a sudden, Moses went to God and said, God, what am I going to do? God looked at him and said, use what's in your hand. Well, what did Moses have in his hand? He had a rod. What I'm saying to you, use what's in your mouth. What's in your mouth? It should be the word of Almighty God. Just like Moses raised up the rod and began to say something, you got to open up your mouth and begin to declare what God has already said concerning your physical body. I don't care what's standing before you. I don't care if it's cancer standing before me. I don't care if it's AIDS standing before me. I don't care if it's lung cancer. I don't care what's standing before you. You got to open up your mouth and say, I shall live and not die and declare the word of Almighty God. I, with long life will he satisfy me and show me his salvation. Man, you got to open up your mouth and say something. You, what do you mean say something? You got to get the word of God on him. Open up your mouth and declare right now, right where you are. Go ahead and say I'm here. Go, come on, listen. I need to hear you say I'm here. Come on, come on, come on. By faith, I, come on, say you're healed right now. Why? Because the devil don't like it when you speak God's word over your life, over your mind, over your body. Well, Luke 7, Luke 7, Luke 7. He said, verse 7 said, Wherefore neither, uh, neither thought I myself worthy to come unto thee, but saying a word, speak a word, and my servant shall be healed. So notice, he said, listen, uh, uh, Jesus, you don't have, I'm, I'm a man under authority. You don't even have to come to my house. Because I know when I speak a word, notice, this natural man... This general in the military had a revelation on the power of speaking words. He said, when I speak words to my soldiers, they understand it and they don't alter it at all. They follow it to a T. So, Jesus, I understand from the natural, from a military background, 
that if I say something to my lieutenant, if I say something to those who are underneath me, then I know that they will carry out the plan without even hesitation. So if I know they do it for me, then what I need for you to do, Jesus, don't even come in my house because I'm not even worthy for you to even step your holy self into this domain right here. But the only thing I want you to do, Jesus, just speak the word. Notice, he said, Jesus, speak the word. Notice, Jesus looked at him and, said, and verse 9 said, and when Jesus heard these things, heard what? What the centurion was saying to speak the word. Those are things he were hearing, what he was saying. He marveled. Notice, Jesus marveled at him and turned him about and said unto the people that followed. So in other words, Jesus thought, got marveled and turned the guy around right towards the people and said, I say unto you, I have not found so great faith, no, not even in Israel. Glory to God. There was faith that was coming out of that guy's mouth. Why? He was speaking the word of Almighty God. I, I, I'm telling you, listen, there's power that came because he spoke the word. See, the faith is in your words. Jesus, the faith was in your word. So guess what you got to do? You got to speak the word of God. Why? Because there's faith in your word. Faith, the faith of God. You speak the word of God. You speak the word of God. Glory to God, my God. My time is almost about up. Glory to God. But I'm telling you something. Listen, we, we, of course, we got to get back and, and talking about this. God wants you well. It's in you. You shall live and not die. Hear me. God, I've been sick before, and I've been healed before. I like healing better. I'm sure you do too. You understand what I'm saying? No one likes to be sick. No one likes to be suffering. No, God wants you here. It's not the will of God for you to suffer. I don't care what doctors say. I don't care what people say. It is the will of God for you to be healed. You just got to open your mouth and start declaring. So right now, this is what I want you to do. I need you to go ahead and put your hand on the part of that body that's, that's not functioning, wherever it may be. Right now, in the privacy of your home, uh, where, if you're driving in, in your automobile, wherever you are right now, where you about, if you're listening through audio or watching me on video right now, I need to go ahead and put that on the part of your body. Father, in the name of Jesus, I curse sickness. I curse disease. I command it to dry up, wood up, and be no more. I command that part of that body that's not functioning, I command it to function. I command heart to function, blood pressure to be normal, uh, di sugar to be normal. I curse sugar diabetes. I, I curse cholesterol. I, I, I command command lungs to function properly right now. I command skeletal system to line itself up with the word of Almighty God. Father, I release the healing power of God to go right through that device that they're watching us right now, right where they are, God. Thank you for bodies lining up. Thank you for finances being healed. Thank you for things being restored according to the word of Almighty God. Father, we give you all the praise and the glory. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Well, glory to God. I'm, I'm telling you, I sense the anointing of God here. Amen. You are healed in Jesus' name. Well, I, I want to do this before we get, get out the air here. I, I want you to really pray about becoming what I call a CPM partner. It's called Clinton Potter's Ministry Partners. They're, these are partners who I believe that God is going to raise up in these last days to help me take this gospel to the nations of this world. CPM partners, uh, uh, men and women of God who God has instructed to sow into this ministry. You can go on www.clintonpotters.org. That's www.clintonpotters.org. Potters.org. There's more information up there. You can go up there and fill all the information out. Love for you to be a partner. You say, well, preacher, what amount should I sow? You know what? That's between you and God. There is no gift too small, definitely no gift too large. Amen. That God will lead on your heart to sow into this ministry. I'm telling you, we're taking healing for the day to the nations of this world. How many people can agree out that today our world needs healing? Come on now. You know what's going on in our society today. How many people will agree our world needs healing? Let us, help us today to take the gospel of Jesus Christ to the nations of the world, to let people know that God is a healer. We love you so much, and we thank God for you today. Thank God for all the things that you're doing. But remember, God wants you well.